just wanted to do a little review of what we did before Thanksgiving. So we had our Raptors homepage created looking nice and we made a template so that we could create some of our sub pages. <clears throat> and then we added an image to our page and I mistakenly thought we had done this before. So I wanna go over the tag syntax a little bit first. So we already knew how to add a background image. That's what it looks like. <clears throat> so here's a sample code for adding just an image to our page, not a background image, but one that the text can wrap around uh, and that we will put into our HTML code wherever we would like it to appear. So first you have the actual HTML tag. This would not be in your HTML tag dictionary yet, but we'll add it. So it is the image tag. Notice it is self-closing and wherever you put it in your code, that's where your graphic will appear on the page. The next part is the, this part stands for source. So it's the name of your image, this attribute. And then we are using as an example, a graphic called mouse.jpg. So on our page, you can see we used <clears throat> page photos slash great gray owl.jpg. And because we put our graphic into a folder, so you just have to make sure you have the right path. So if it doesn't show up, check and see where your image is. The next part of the image tag is the alt text. It stands for alternate. And we should always include this so that we are uh, handicap accessible. So screen readers will use that. And it will also display if your graphic doesn't load. So try to make it a really short but complete sentence. And then width and height. Uh, these are optional. If you want to resize your image, it is better to do it inside of image editing software. We talked about this a little bit, but if you've ever seen an image look like this, you can see that if you just stretch it in one direction instead of um, keeping it the ratios the same, then your image is going to look a little funky. <clears throat> So we added an image to our Raptors page. And let's go look and see what that looked like as a reminder. So this is our gray, gray, great gray owl page. And this is what it looked like. And everybody's I'm pretty sure look like this by the end. So you'll notice that now these links work. We can go to the home page. There's our home page. And we can, we can go to the great gray owl page. Nice. It's starting to really look like a website. So now we have one, two, three, four additional pages that we need to create. So we're going to start with our template.html. And we're just going to go ahead and save, oops, each of those into one of our sub pages. We're going to save it four additional times. So we're going to open it. There's actually going to be two ways we can do this. First, we can open it with notepad. There's my template.html. We'll do a file, save as. And I'm going to rename this so that I don't overwrite my template as great underscore horned underscore owl dot HTML. Then I'll hit save. So again, what I did was I did file save as and I renamed it as great horned owl dot HTML. If you don't have that done yet, pause, rewind the beauty of a video. We're going to go ahead and create our next page. Here's a second way to do it. You guys may be familiar with this already. I can select template.html in File Explorer and then do a right click and copy it. Then I can paste into Explorer, and now I have a copy. 
and I can rename that copy to the next page, which I'm going to call burrowing underscore owl dot HTML. Nice, there it is right there. So I can paste again. I don't even have to copy again. I can just paste again. Rename this one. Golden underscore eagle dot HTML. Last page. <clears throat> Rename that one to comparison dot HTML comparison. So take a moment, make sure that you have the same files I do. Now you will not have this class 12 copy code and you will not have the CSS reference sheet. Those are just mine. So you should have index.html, great horned owl, great gray owl, golden eagle, burrowing owl, and comparison. So pause for a moment to make sure you have all of those files. Okay, also as a reminder, we downloaded before Thanksgiving these four graphics, one, two, three, four. Make sure you have those in your page photos folder. And once again, site style has three graphics, background, banner, and bullet and our global.css. What does this look like now? Well, here's my index.html. This is my homepage. Great gray owl looks really nice. The others should work, but they won't have anything on them yet. Burrowing owl, golden eagle. Nice. Previously, it would have come up with page not found. So we know that it is working right now. <clears throat> so let's go to our great horned owl page. Great horned owl. And we will open this with notepad. Okay, there we are. And we are going to change the title which now says Raptors, Birds of Prey, because that's what our template is, says. And we're going to change it to say Raptors, Great Horned Owl. I'm going to change the de description to say <clears throat> Great Horned Owl. Now I'm going to come down to the div with the ID main content. So my main content div and underneath, I'm going to add an H1 that says, surprise, great horned owl and close it and save it. Okay. Then let's add an image. So I'm going to add a div here with the class of photo, you remember we already created a selector in our external style sheet of for the class photo. So anything we put in after this will have the same formatting. That white border, it'll float to the right. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little copying and pasting here. <clears throat> and I'm going to let you guys have this document as well. Here it is. Nope, that's the burrowing one. Uh, 
eagle. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to type this in. <clears throat> We're going to add an image, the source of page photos. Sorry. Great underscore horned underscore owl dot JPEG. And the alt text will be The book said to use that. I feel like that is <clears throat> pretty much should say great horned owl. Don't you think that should say great horned owl? And then we're putting in, we are putting in a width and height, but just know that this is the actual width and height of the images. And we have sized them all to be exactly the same. And then I'm going to close <clears throat> my image tag. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a paragraph as a caption, great gray owl. It's not gray, great horned owl. I'm going to change this word to say great horned owl. I must have copied and pasted wrong. Then I want to end that div. <clears throat> so go ahead and type this in. I'll have you type in this one time. This section right here is what you did. What you need to do. I know some of you are slow typers. That's okay. I'm going to sit it right on this just for a moment. Go ahead and pause if you need to copy this. Now let me grow, go grab some information about great horned owls. <clears throat> this document I'm pulling from is in Slack. So you can get your code just like I am from a Word document in Slack. So now right below the photo div I'm going to add these paragraphs of information. The great horned owl, etc. And I'm going to save. So here's everything I just added to my template. I'm not making any changes to the external style sheet at this point. I am just adding content and all the styling should appear because I added this class of photo. So nice to only have to do that once. So let's take a look at our great horned owl page now. Nice. So there's my information. The image is on the right hand side. It has a nice white border. It has a caption at the bottom, great horned owl, a little bit different font. Looks very much like the others. Now, if you Notice I have a fair amount of space here. That's because I have a widescreen laptop. And so it is stretching the page to accommodate my laptop. Something to consider when you align your photo on the right like that. We did not use the word align. It's we're floating it because it will stay all the way to the right. So it, it had to add some spaces in my display right here. 
All right, let's do the next one. Let's create our other page. Let's open So I don't have so many things open. Now, if your page didn't look like mine, then go back and look at, go back in the video and look at my great horned owl.html and see what's different. Okay. So now let's do that with burrowing owl. We're going to open burrowing owl.html in notepad. Right. We're going to change our title up at the top in the meta tags to say burrowing owl instead of birds of prey. We're going to change the description in the meta tags to say burrowing owl. Burrowing owl. Nice. Then we're going to come down here to the main content page. And this time I'm going to be so nice and not make you type it all out. So we'll go to this copy code file and you'll notice everything you need. The H1. Oh, that just says burrowing. Let's change that to say burrowing owl. Okay. The H1, the photo div, the image source tag, the caption, the end of the div, and the paragraph information about burrowing owls. You're going to copy all of that. That's not what I wanted. Copy all of that. Go over to burrowing owl HTML, and we're going to paste it all in this main content div. See, there's the main content div, and I've now added all of the content I want for burrowing owl. I'm just going to add a little comment right here. So I remember that this is the end of the photo div. I saved it. Now let's see if that page works. So burrowing owl. Nice. There it is. Everything looks just like I expected. So here's the HTML again for burrowing owl. I added all of this main content. So pause if you need to until yours looks the same. And now we'll go to golden eagle, open golden eagle with notepad. So this is really important to get the experience of creating a template and making these changes because this is what you guys need to do with your midterm project. If you spend enough time on your homepage and your template, adding the subpages will not be very difficult. So we'll change our title. Instead of birds of prey, we want to say golden eagle. We'll change our description. Whoops. to say golden eagle. And now we need to put in our main content, which is in the copy code file. So let's find, here it is, golden eagle, the photo div, the image source, and the paragraph, paragraphs. Nope, that's it right there. Copy, go to Golden Eagle, remember this is in Golden Eagle, and paste all of that. Save, don't forget to save. Let's check it out. Golden Eagle, sweet. So we have practically a completed website at this point. Every one of our pages works. They all look the same. My Raptors banner is at the top of every page. Nice. 
So now they're all working except for this one, comparing raptors, and we're going to do something special with that. So we are going to learn how to use a table. Now tables, you've seen a table before, Microsoft Word or Excel. Before we had CSS, which is such a robust tool, we had to use tables a lot in page design. It's kind of a mess. We would use tables to lay out the page itself. <clears throat> so now we're just gonna use tables just as an actual table. So tables are a series of HTML tags and we're gonna add a table of comparison data to our Raptors web page. So this is the HTML code. First, at the top we have our tables tag. That would be at the beginning and end of the table. Then we have another tag for a table row, a next tag for the table heading, and the TD tag for table data. I know it's a lot of tags. Let's look at this sample table of chores. So notice I have to start with the table tag and end with the closing table tag. So my browser knows I'm creating a table. So there's those tags, I have to have that. If you don't have the closing tag and something crazy happens, just make sure you have it. Okay, let's look at the first row. This is the first row of my table, so I will have to put at the beginning of the row an opening TR or table row tag, and at the end of the row, a closing table row tag. Each cell of the table is considered table data. So for this cell to be here but not have anything in it, I will just put an opening table data tag and a closing tag with nothing in between. These cells have a bold font, so this is called a table header. So each of these, I have an opening table header tag the actual text I want to display, and the closing table header tag. And I have to do it for each header. So this is the completed conversion of this table to HTML across the top. Now I'm looking at the second line. I have to start the row with an open table row tag. This is bold, this is a header, Jane. So that has the table header tag open and close. And this is not a header. This is just regular data. So the tag I'm going to use is TD or table data. So here's your opening table data tag, the text that will show take out trash, and then the closing table data tag. And that's the same format all the way across the row. And then I end the row with a closing table row tag. So let's convert the rest of this table to HTML and see what it looks like. So for this table, there's no borders because I didn't tell it to. The def there is a def border around each of these, but the default style is none. And here's what the whole HTML looks like. It's kind of a mess, right? It's a little hard to see, but that's what's required to do a table in HTML. Okay, let's try it. <clears throat> Let me close out these extra files I have going. So we are going to find the file comparison.html. And we're going to open it up in Notepad. All right, let's do our t changes from the template first. So I'm going to change the title to say comparison charts. So I did right up here. I changed the title and I will change the description tag to say comp whoops, I'll just do a delete. 
comparing different raptors, period. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the main content section. And there is going to be a little bit of information before my table. So go ahead and pull that from the code copy file. Here it is. It says comparing different raptors. So I'm just going to copy this. Do not copy this table right now because notice it starts with row two. Only copy this short section here, the heading, comparing different raptors, and this one paragraph. So we're going to copy that. Go to comparison.html to the main content div, and we're going to paste just the header and the paragraph. I'm going to save it, and I'm just going to go over here and test it real quick to make sure that I did what I thought I was going to do. There it is. Comparing different raptors. No picture. We're going to have a table here. But there's my paragraph information. Okay, I just felt like I should test that. Now, we are going to type in our table. Don't worry, we won't be typing the whole thing in, but I want you to at least get the experience of typing in the first row. So, we need to open our table, open table tag, and I like to go ahead and close things before I do anything, so don't forget. Open table tag, closing table tag. All right, now I'm going to add, now let's do this, the first row, so table row, open, close, open, close. I'm going to put a comment in that says row one. I'll give you a little bit of time to get that typed in. I know I'm a fast typer. Hit pause if you need to. I do want to say that it's kind of hard to create a table in HTML just by thinking about the table in your head. So if you decide to include a table on your website, it is a good idea to go ahead and draw it out on a piece of paper so that you don't miss anything. So you can see what's row one, what's row two, So just like the example, I want the first section to be just a blank cell. So we are going to do an opening and closing, closing, table data tag, so there'll be nothing in there. If you remember, it's very similar to this table. Let me go all the way to the beginning. See where this had nothing in it? So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to have anything show up in that table, in that cell. So that's what table data with nothing in between does. So we have our opening and closing table tags, table row for row one, opening and closing tags. And then our first cell of table data doesn't have any words displayed. The next tag we're going to do is table head and we're going to use the word forest. Close the tag. So just like our, this table here, this will be a header for our table and it will be bold. So that's why I'm telling it that it's a header. It just applies that styling for me. Okay. So my first heading is the word forest. My next heading is the word prairie. Then we have mountains. And deserts. This is probably a good time to pause for a moment 
and make sure you get all of that typed in. <clears throat> Notice these are all headings. Forest, prairie, mountains, and deserts. Okay, so there's several other rows, but I'm going to be nice. And I put that information in the copy code file, yay. So you're going to copy table rows two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna copy that going to go back to HTML. Make sure you put this below the closing tag of your first table row. So I have table row one. My spacing got a little weird. Table row two, table row three, table row four, table row five. Sorry, spacing is different. <clears throat> so here's the whole table. Let's save it. I'll save and let's go see what our table looks like. Here's my page. I'll refresh. Well, there it is. So it's basically telling me <laughs> I guess it's telling me where they live, where you can find them. Yes, 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 yes. And then blanks, where I can find them. So it worked, yay, but it's a little ugly. So we want to add some style to our table, okay? So what can we do to add some style? We can, yep, we did that. We can add some uh, border. We know what border style means. Things like solid, dashed, we've seen that before, border width, border color. We can add all of these attributes, all of these properties, excuse me, to any HTML element. And we've used them before. Let's take a look at what they look like in a, in a table. So there is a shorthand for this border. You, it uh, evaluates the width and then the style and then the color. But you can certainly do them as these three separate tags. Okay. So this one, the width is two pixels and the line style is solid. And then I've said for table headers, it should be green and the table data should be blue. And that's what that looks like. In this one, I said that the, um, this is a little bit shortcut. I can say for table header and table data, the border should be solid and purple. Okay. I should probably actually do the slideshow. Okay, for this one, <clears throat> you notice on the previous slide, there's a little space in between all the cells. This is what it does by default. You might want that, but it, you might want it to look more like this. In which case you have to add a property for the table that says border collapse. And then that kind of merges the lines. Takes away that blank space in between the table cells. Okay, and then look, we added some padding here. See how this is, the border's right up on the text? And I know my picture, uh, the table on the right looks like it has a little less, little skinnier border. That was not on purpose, I apologize. But you'll notice this has some padding around the words. I find that a little easier to see, a little easier to read. 
Oh, nice. So we can also add a background color to each of the table cells. So I said that table headers should have a background color of light gray. And that's what that looks like. So here's a whole bunch of CSS styling. So I gave the entire table the properties to collapse the borders. I aligned the text in the center um, for the table header and the table data. I gave it a solid purple line and some padding so that I have space around the text. I made the table header background light gray. I made the font size and different and I made it small caps and green. And then for table data only, you see, the text color is red, it's bold and it's italic. So we can do a lot of styling with CSS. All right, let's try it. So we're gonna open our global.css. So remember that'll be in site style, global.css. We're going to open it in Notepad. Global.css in Notepad. We have a lot of rules in here right now. If you open up other web pages and you do a view page source, <clears throat> sometimes you can see tons of CSS at the top. And I think now you would probably recognize it. So we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and we're gonna add a new selector for tables. And guess what? It's on your copy code file. Yay for copy and paste. Here's a comment. We're going to include that comment that says tables. That certainly would help us in making changes later on. Woo, we're going to copy all of this. Okay. All of that. No, wait a minute. I think it went too far. Yeah, let's copy it all. Sorry. And then I'll explain. Let's copy it all. So copy. We're in our global.css. And we will paste that in and let's take a look at what it's doing. So for the table as a whole, we're going to have the collapsed border. We're going to have the table take up a hundred percent of our viewing port. The text is going to be aligned to the left. You know what? Uh, we're clearing the float that's happening. So up, I had to think for a minute what that was. So up above in our style sheet, we have told the paragraph to float around an image because most of the pages have an image on them and it floats to the right of the text. So in this case, we're clearing the float property that was set earlier. And we're going, so we don't want our table to float to the right. And then and we're aligning all the text to the left. Then we're applying to just the cells themselves, a thin solid border. That is whatever color this is. We're adding five pixels of padding on the inside and we have set the font size. Then just for the headers, we're using a background color. And then what? This is a background image. The reason we set a background color, even though we are also setting a background image, is so that the if the image doesn't load, then the background color will load instead. I am going to jump over here and pause the video for a minute because I don't think I have this image and I don't think I send it to you. 
Okay, so fun stuff. I went into CompuScholar and found the table dot gif. You will have this before you start the video, so I apologize for that. So you won't have to go through this issue. So you should have put that table dot gif in the site style folder. So now these are the files that should be in here. And if we look at our global.css file, once again, there's our table.gif that we're going to put only as a background image for the table header. And I do want to mention, again, this is the exact same formatting, the exact same syntax that we would use to do the background image of the body of our page or anything else. So that's the same syntax. It doesn't change just because it's in the table head or in the table data cell. So same syntax to put the background image and here's what it looks like. <clears throat> and if for some reason this graphic um, does not display, then we will see just a background color instead. So now you might see this style rule that says caption. And I went ahead and just copied it all in at once, saved me from going back and forth doing copying. So you can add a caption to a table. When we did this page or these sub pages, we did add a little photo caption at the bottom and we just used the paragraph tag. And that is fine to use for something that floats like this. But I, it's a good idea for a table to go ahead and add a caption because if you need to move the table or you need to <clears throat> resize it, the caption just stays with the table. The difference is the caption tag, and this is an HTML tag, always appears at the top of the table. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to comparison.html and right under my opening table tag, I'm going to put a caption. It is its own HTML tag, and the caption I'm going to put in is habitats. Close my HTML tag. I'm going to save it. <clears throat> so again, what I did is right under the table tag, opening table tag, I added a new HTML tag called caption, and my caption has the d text of habitats and that will display. Now let's look at what we did in the global.css to the caption. We're making it be a certain color, a certain size. It will have a bottom, should have a bottom border on it, whatever color that is, same as the text. Should be aligned to the left, it'll be bold, and it'll have some space underneath it of 10 pixels. Let's go see what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, there it is. Aligned left. Doesn't appear specifically bold to me. I mean, that does not look a lot different to me. I don't want to spend a lot of time in the video figuring out why it doesn't look different. We did set it to bold. I don't see anything incorrect that I've put in here, but I will research that and let you guys know if I come up with an explanation for that. I do want to say that when you put in a caption, it always shows up at the top. I tried it. I put it in at the bottom of the coat of the table. I put it in. down here at the end to see if it would show up like underneath and it did not. And I couldn't find the specific listing for it, but I tried it in a couple different places and it, no matter where I put it, it always showed up at the top. So I suppose by default, then a caption is 
always going to show up at the top of the table. <clears throat> There's a few other things we can do for our table. So we talked about adding alt text to our photos so that uh, if a screen reader used them, it would use that alt text instead of, you know, the blind person can't see the photo. So we're going to add something similar to our table. It's called a summary. So it is the summary attribute. And I'm just going to do a short summary. Comparing the habitats of raptors. I'll save it. Again, this is where it was. It was added to the opening tag of tables. It is an attribute of the tables tag. Notice doesn't show up anywhere, but a screen re reader would have access to that. Now the last thing we want to do in our comparison, so again, there's that summary I added. <clears throat> the final activity for chapter 12 is to actually add another table to this page. So if you go to the copy code file, underneath it says final table code. If we had met in person, then you guys may have you know, I may have assigned this to you to do on your own, but right now we just need to move on and concentrate on our midterm project. So I'm going to let you copy. I left this in to copy. You can see we have five rows of table data and it has a caption of Raptor sizes. And I want to talk briefly about this symbol right here. This is called a non-breaking space. So if we want to use a paragraph tag just simply to create a space, we need to, we can use this combination called a non-breaking space to fill out our paragraph tag. So I'm going to copy all of this code for the final table and any styling that I want will already be applied because I put it in my style sheet. So I'm going to comparison.html, go all the way to the bottom. Just going to find the end of this table. I still want it in the main content div. Okay. So I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to paste in my second table. <clears throat> And so I'm putting this non-breaking space in between the two tables. And I've got one at the end too. Just gives me a little extra space between each one. I will save that file and let's go look at our page. Yay. So notice all the same styling was applied to this table. Aren't you glad I didn't make you type in all of these centimeters and inches? So that's it. So guess what? We have just completed our Raptors website. Considering what we started with, I think we've come quite a long way. All of our pages work. We have nice rollovers going on. Nice. And there's our final major. So awesome job, you guys. And I look forward to seeing your completed websites.